This is chapter six of our negotiation book, Integrative Bargaining. We're going to look at the vocabulary. So let's jump right into the vocab. Appreciate. Appreciate means to understand a situation. I appreciate the situation. I understand the details of the situation. It's a way to tell the other side of the negotiation, your counterpart, that you understand their situation. I appreciate your need for good quality. Or I appreciate your need for a lower price. Or I appreciate your need for a faster delivery. So it shows the other side that you relate to them, that you feel empathy, you understand them. A really great word to use in your negotiation. I appreciate your position. I appreciate your ideas. I appreciate your position. A great word to use. Very, very cooperative kind of sounding. Now, it doesn't mean you agree with it. It doesn't mean that you will give in or compromise. It just means I understand what you're saying. I understand your situation. Attractive. Attractive means to look good or to have something that is interesting or something that is favorable or positive. So usually in negotiation, it's the offer or the, or the package of the offer or something in the offer, something in the deal that is attractive. So for example, you may say, this price is very attractive to us. Now we just need to work out the quantity. Or we may say something like, this product is very attractive, but this price is simply too high for us. Cooperating with your company is attractive for our future. So it's, it's a very good one to use in your negotiation. Automatic. Automatic means something happens on auto. It does not need uh, people to implement it. It works on its own. It's independent of humans or people. And this automatic, we can use this in our negotiation when we're trying to say that something is not under my control. It's automatic. For example, a very easy, we could say, if you buy this product 100 units, you automatically get a 5% discount. That's an automatic discount. You can say that. Or an automatic something, some kind of service or something you get. And that makes the uh, offer sound attractive. Competitiveness. Competitive, of course, meaning to compete. A compete, that is some companies are doing other things that are working in the market to uh, sell to the same customers or the same market segments. And the competitiveness is how good are you compared to other companies? How good is your service compared to other companies' service? How good is your product and price combination compared to the competition, the other ones? Your competitiveness could be high or your competitiveness could be low. Now you can use this in your negotiation when you're talking about a product's uh, price, product, bundle. You may say something like, uh, well, you know, this product and this price, the competitiveness is just not very high. That means I could buy something like this for a lower price from another company so that their competitiveness is higher. Explain. You can always ask the other side to explain more. Explain is a great word to use in your negotiation when you just simply ask them. Can you explain exactly what price you're looking for? Can you explain exactly the quality that you need for your customers? So that's a great word to use and it means to tell the details, to give more information and usually spoken. Feature. Feature is of course usually related to products and our products have numerous features. When, we, when we're in the negotiation, we're going to emphasize those features, positive features. A product could have negative features, but you would never say that out loud. You would never say, let me tell you our product's negative features. You would never say that. You're always on the positive features. Now, of course, you could ask the other company, your, your, your adversary in the, in the negotiation, 
Can you please tell me what are the negative features of your product? But of course, they're not going to tell you that. It's a silly question. You can ask for the positive features, though. What features stand out? What features do your product have? Does your product have that others don't? Integrative bargaining, which is kind of a main topic. Integrative meaning that you want to integrate, come together. Integrate means put together. So integrative bargaining means basically win-win approach in bargaining, where both sides get what they want. A key point is both sides need to know what they want. You cannot have integrative bargaining if you don't know what you want. So that kind of what do they want is a key point. Integrate. What they want comes together and both get what they want. Mutually, mutual, mutually, of course, is great with this integrative idea because mutually means both sides together, both sides. So I get something, you get something mutually. We come to agreement and we get a mutual benefit. I get a benefit, you get a benefit. It doesn't mean the same benefit. It doesn't mean that I get A and you get A. It could be I get A and you get B, but you want to have B and I want to have A. We have a mutual relationship, a mutual win-win. I got what I wanted, you got what you wanted. So it's not like splitting something down the middle. Overcome, meaning to win, to uh, confront a situation that is difficult, but then to get over that situation. So you overcome the situation. Overcome, I, you would not really use this a lot. You might say something in your negotiation like, can we overcome this problem? Can we please overcome this last issue? But usually overcome is used in your planning because when you're talking inside your company with your teammates, with your group, you're trying to figure out what are the last problems you need to overcome? What are the last issues in the negotiation that you need to solve, overcome? Package. Package is what the products are put together, right? In a package, you go to the store, you buy a package. But here, what we're talking about is the negotiation or deal package. And that is all the parts of the negotiation, all the parts of the deal. So what is the price? What's the price? And for that price, what's the product? And for that price and product, what's the shipping? And all of these things together makes a package. And we're going to call that the deal package. You can ask in a negotiation, you can ask the other side, what package are you offering? And it means, what are all the things together? What offer can you make me? Or you can come out and say, this package is very attractive. Or you could say, this package is not very interesting. Perhaps. Perhaps is a great word to use in your negotiation because it tells the other side that you're not really agreeing with them, but you're not saying no. Perhaps. It's possible. Uh, I guess you could say possible would be about the, about the same, but possible sounds um, a little bit like out there, like, yeah, it's possible, anything's possible. But perhaps in a negotiation sounds like, hmm, perhaps we can agree on this. Perhaps we can find a price that we both agree on. Perhaps we could accept that product rather than the previous product. Perhaps. So perhaps is slightly positive and sounds like something's possible, so it leaves hope. It's a great way to keep the negotiation going. Even though you want to say no, you don't say no. Say perhaps. Profit margin. I think all of our business students would know the profit margin is the ratio of the gain after you take out the expenses. So you have a selling price and then if you take out or minus the expenses, then that margin in, expressed in a ratio would be the profit margin. A lot of people get confused who are not business students or don't have business experience about how this is calculated. But in any case, uh, we're not going to worry about the details. You can use this in your negotiation because when you're talking business to business, you are talking about things like margins and profit. You're not really talking just about the straight out price of the product, but rather the price after the costs are added in, so you need to have a margin. So you can come out and say something like, you know, my margin on this is too small. Satisfactory. Satisfactory meets requirements, is okay, passes, you accept it. 
Satisfactory is a great way to say it's okay, I agree, but I'm not happy about agreeing. Satisfactory sounds like it's just okay, and I'm not unhappy, but I'm not happy. So it's a great word to use in your negotiation while keeping your secret secret. Remember that upper and lower limit you really want to keep secret. And so as it gets closer and further this way, you don't want to be, ah, I'm so happy, because then the other side will be, hey, you're happy? If you're really happy, I must have done something wrong. I gave you too much. So you can answer by saying something like, that's satisfactory. It's just okay. Schedule, the timing that we can do something. And in this case, the schedule is the negotiation schedule. Now, we would use this in a negotiation, usually at the beginning when we're trying to make a schedule. So you can tell the other side, I have a very tight schedule, meaning I don't have a lot of time. I really need to finish this. Or you could say, I do not have a clear schedule for this negotiation. Can we make a schedule? Of course, if one side came to the other side and, and told them, uh, I have a very tight schedule, that's a little bit like giving away your secret information, which is not great. For example, if I were to tell you, I said, I want to negotiate with you, but I have a very tight schedule. I only have two days. And you heard me say two days, you'd say, hmm, I'm, he needs two day schedule. What if I make it four days? That's going to give him pressure. So usually when we talk about schedule, it's about making a schedule. Or you say there's a schedule, but it's not really true because you don't want to give away your secret information, of course. Slight, something very small, not very big, slight difference. So we use this in our negotiation to say something like, uh, our difference is very slight. The price difference is very small, it's very slight. Uh, there's only a slight difference between your offer and what we need to complete this negotiation. Slightly, same idea, only an adjective, an adverb this time, slightly. It's slightly higher than what we would like. The price is slightly higher than what we require. Sweeten. Now sweet, of course, being something like sugar, something is sweet. It's attractive. We use it for the word, you know, just generally attractive. But in negotiation, you can use it to talk about an offer or about a deal. And you can say, this deal is very attractive. That price is very attractive. Or you could say the other way around. It's not attractive. You can use sweet in its place, right? So you can say, hmm, that's a sweet deal meaning it's attractive. At the same time, we can just take this sweeten and say, I have this deal. I know you don't like it, but I'm going to sweeten the deal, meaning make it sweeter, make it more attractive, right? So this is really, these are really great words to be using in your negotiation in English. I'm going to sweeten the deal. You can ask the other side, can you sweeten the deal? Can you sweeten the deal by giving us 10% more for the same price? Sweet. Tight. Now, in the negotiation, this is a very normal word to use. It often, it's easy to get confused when the other side says tight. So, usually tight means uh, a tight fit, there's not a lot of room, there's no space. So, in the negotiation, usually you're talking about, I cannot really give you anything more because it's too tight. So, for example, my price. You may ask me to lower my price if I'm the seller, but I can tell you that my situation is very tight. This price situation is very tight, meaning that the cost of production and this price are very close. I don't have much space to give you, so it's very tight. Understand. So, of course, I understand very simple. It means that you can see the point of view, you can relate to someone, you can, you can not necessarily agree with them, but you can follow their idea, you can listen to them. Now, this word, you would think, ah, oh, this is a very simple word. Why is this in negotiation? Because when you tell the other side, you understand them. They really appreciate it. So you can say something like, I understand your position. I just cannot agree with it. I cannot accept it. Do you understand my position? That's a great way to reverse it. If the other side's giving you a lot of pressure, if your counterpart is giving you pressure, you can say, do you understand my position? I would like you to understand my position. I want you to understand that we're losing money on this deal. 
So that understand, it seems like a very simple word, but it's a great negotiation word to use because it helps you to get some of that relationship going. Value. So value, of course, being that you get, you pay something, you get something. I love the, the way the British say this in British English is value for money. It's very clear. How much money did you pay? What did you get? So value in American English just means how much did you pay and what did you get? So if you pay less and you get more, it's a great value. If you pay more and you get less, it's a terrible value. So in your negotiation, you can very often use this to say, this is a great value. This price and product combination is a good value. At the same time, you can use it the other way. You can ask for a better value. This offer you're giving me is not a good value. I need you to give me a better value. I need a better offer. Valuable. Valuable, high value, a good value, something that is valuable. Now, you can say this in your negotiation, when you're negotiating, by letting the other side know what's important to you. This is very valuable. But usually, I think you would use this when you're trying to sell a product or sell a service, and you're trying to convince the other side that the thing you're selling is valuable. It has a good value. It's worth something. Now, the value, of course, is how much did you pay. But valuable is just saying, not without the money, how much did you pay? Valuable is just saying, this is really a good thing. So this is a really valuable product that we're selling today. Now, is it a good value? That depends on its price, doesn't it? So value and valuable, a little bit different there. Okay, that's it for part six. Thank you.